Hey folks, in this episode we're going to learn how to make this animated tree in Blender. It's quite a straightforward tutorial, so without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything and I'm going to hit delete. And we're going to start with a blank canvas here. I'm then going to hit numpad 1 to go into front view, go up to edit, preferences, we'll select add-ons and we'll type in sapling. So type in sap, it should come up with this add curve sapling tree gen. So you're going to click this tick box and then if you want this to load every time you load Blender, just click save preferences. When that's enabled, I'm going to hit shift A, add and we'll go to curve, navigate until we find sapling tree gen. Enable that, this is the default tree. I'll open up this menu here, down here, you should have some presets. I'm going to select the white birch. That will do for now. I'm not going to go through every setting here, but I do encourage you to go through these settings and see what works best for you. I'm just going to show you the basics. So first of all, the bevel resolution is how many cuts you're going to see in the actual tree. We could just do a bevel resolution of one and add a subdivision surface. The curve resolution is how many bends are going to be in the branches. So if I take that up, there's going to be more cuts in the trunks and the branches. So I'm going to take this down and I'll just stick it at level two for now and then we'll go to branch splitting and what branch splitting does is how many branches you're going to see so if i turn this up to three you're going to see a lot more branches but i'm going to keep this set to two the base splits is how many times the main trunk splits if i take it down to zero there's no splits then there's one and three the next thing is leaves. I'm going to click show leaves. I'm going to increase the size of the leaves, which is this one here. So that's the overall scale. I'm going to type 0.3. Maybe I could turn that up a bit more. 0.4. Obviously, these leaves are oversized for the scale of the tree. And we can turn the amount of leaves up. Maybe try 25. I'm just going to keep it quite low because I've got my screen capture going on here. Just be reserved when changing the leaves. The same as the branch splitting. I wouldn't go to higher levels. Like I'm going to click this now with the leaves and it will slow my computer right down. And if I do it one more, I'd run into the possibility of Blender crashing. So I'm going to set this to two. And then, so we've added the leaves. Now I'm going to go to armature. I'm going to go use armature. The levels, if I keep it at zero, it will make an armature for all levels. Or if I just want to set the armature for one level, which will just be these primary branches, and you set it to one, um, I'm going to keep it at zero. Now I'm going to go into animation, and I'm going to click the armature animation and the leaf animation. If I push play now, you're going to see the tree animating with this loop frames here i can set it to loop i want it to go over 120 frames so if i go here and i type in 120 that means the animation is going to loop over 120 frames i can't change this number at the moment because if i do i run the risk of losing this menu here so let's just change the wind speed so i'm going to change my wind speed to 2.5 then i'm going to hit play Okay, so I'm happy with that so far. We can change the leaf wind settings here. So if I push play and let's change the frequency to maybe five, you'll see the leaves flickering a lot more. I'd say between one and two is a good level. So I'm gonna set it to two. There should be some flickering, but not too much. So I'm happy with those settings. So now I can close this menu here. I can then change my end frame to 120. Now if I rewind, let's just increase my timeline so we can see what we're doing here. Now if I push play, that should be a perfect loop as it approaches the end and it will restart and you shouldn't see any jittering. It should be a perfect loop. So now, so I'm gonna bring this up. I'm gonna change this to my shader editor. You can use image textures for these leaves, but I'm just gonna show you the basic materials. There should be a little hack. These will be UV unwrapped with a stretch. So if I had a noise texture, it will make it look like bark. If not, we can remap it using a mapping node. With my tree trunk selected, I'm gonna click new. I'm then going to hit shift A, add texture, noise texture. I'm then going to go to edit, preferences, and in the add-ons section, type in node, and then enable this node wrangler. It's always good to have this enabled every time you load Blender. Enable this node wrangler here, click this button, save preferences, and this will always load with Blender. So with my noise texture selected, I'm gonna left click, select it, and I'm gonna hit Control T, and it'll add these two nodes here, a texture coordinate and a mapping node. We're gonna set it from generated to UV, and then I'm gonna hit Shift A, add color, and we'll go for mix color. We're gonna set these to tones of brown. So if I take it down to about there, I'll bring that down, and then maybe I'll hit Control C for copy, and Control V to paste, and maybe we'll make this darker 
with a bit less saturation. Maybe we can make this a bit lighter with a bit less saturation too, round about there, just so we can see what we're doing. I'll then plug this into the principal BSDF. I'm gonna plug my factor from my noise texture into the factor of the mix shader. And then I'm gonna go into preview mode. We can't see much at the moment because we need to increase the scale. So I'm increasing the scale maybe to around 50. You can start seeing the texture coming through here. I'm now gonna add a bump node. So shift A, vector, bump. We'll drag that there and I'll take the factor and I'll drag it into the height of the bump and then I'll drag the normal from the bump map into the normal socket of the principal BSEF. Now we've got bump going. I might turn the scale down, 25 perhaps. Okay, I'm happy with that. And maybe we can bring the strength down to 0.5. And we've got a basic tree trunk texture here. The leaves, so what I might do, duplicate all these. You have to have one active node selected. So I'm gonna box select all of these. I'm gonna hit Control C to copy. I'm then going to select my leaves. I'll click new. I'm gonna hit Control V. And that will paste all those nodes into this material here. I'll then delete this principal BSDF. I'm then going to drag the output into the surface. Okay, it hasn't stretched the UVs on these. We can uh, change that, let's just change the colour. So maybe we'll go for a green. I'll copy that, Control C and Control V. And maybe we can darken that colour. I'm gonna unplug the bump. I'm gonna decrease the scale, maybe 10. And then I'm gonna hit Shift A, add converter colour ramp. Pop that in there. And I'm gonna drag these flags to increase the contrast, just so we can see what we're doing a bit better. And if we decrease the Y to 0.1, for example, if you want photorealism, you're going to have to change these to use image textures. But for demonstration purposes, this will do. I might turn the scale up to 20. I'm going to plug the bump back in and I'm going to decrease the strength to maybe 0 0.025. Let's take the uh, roughness all the way up as well. I'll increase the roughness on this and I'm going to change the color of my leaf for an artistic look. I'm going to unplug these two and I'm gonna change this to a nice pink color. And with the trunk, I'm gonna unplug these two. I'm gonna make the trunk a dark teal, sort of a dark teal color, which is kind of a complementary color. Complementary colors on a color wheel. If you've got a color here, then the opposite color would be here. So now I go into front view, I hit play. And we've got our animated tree. I'm going to go back to my timeline I'm going to set my render engine to EV. I might actually make these materials emissive. So I'm gonna drag my timeline up. I'm gonna click this button. I'm gonna to go to shader editor and I'm just gonna hit shift A, add shader emission. I'm then gonna hit control C over this color and paste it in here, control V. I'll plug that into there and I'll select my leaves and I'm gonna do the same. Shift A, add shader emission, copy that color, control C, control V, and I'll paste it into here. I'll then go into rendered view and click this button. And there we have our tree. This tutorial isn't really about shading. Instead, it's simply just a demonstration to show you how to get a tree into Blender and how to animate it. If you would like to see a tutorial about creating a photorealistic tree, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. We could just quickly set up a scene. Let's do that now. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, Add, and we'll go for Camera. Go to Top View. With the camera selected, we're gonna click the Object Data Properties. I'm gonna hit 90 on the x-axis, zero for Y and zero for Z. I'm then going to drag that G, Y, and we'll drag it round to about here. I'm gonna hit Numpad Zero to go into Camera View. I'm gonna change the focal length to, say, 24 mil maybe. With my camera selected, I'll go into the data properties and I'm just gonna drag this on the Z axis to around about two meters. And then with my camera selected, I'm gonna use the tilt shift option and I'm gonna drag it up on the Y to around about there. Maybe we can drag our camera back a little bit more. So I'm just gonna drag this back to around about there. Negative 25, let's improve this tilt shift a bit. Okay, 0.2. So now I'm going to box select everything. I'm gonna hit Alt E to make an instance. I'm going to hit G, X, and we'll just grab that on the X axis and maybe rotate it on the Z axis to around about there. Maybe we can change the size. I'm going to do the same again. So I'm going to hit Alt D, drag it on the X axis. So that's G, X, and we'll adjust the size and maybe we'll rotate it on the Z axis a little bit more. Let's see what we've got so far. Okay, I might even drag that across a little bit more on the X. Okay, now maybe on the world settings, let's just add a simple sky texture in the scene. So I go to world here. I'm gonna turn this to bright white. I'm gonna increase the strength to two. Let's just get rid of this uh, overlay here so we can see what we're doing. 
for your render settings you go to the output select a destination where you want your file saved whether it's an image sequence or a movie clip I usually choose PNG RGB if you want to go for a video select FFmpeg and then go to encoding and change it from Wachowski to MPEG-4 and then H.264 at medium quality that should be absolutely fine if you're creating a scene that requires a bit more high dynamic range I would suggest going for open EXR and that will give you a lot more dynamic range to play with for post editing so that's pretty much it all you have to do hit Control F12 and that will render out your sequence if you found use from this tutorial please hit the like button and subscribe it really helps my channel have a great day and thanks for watching